Welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. Today we're diving into one of Jesus Christ's most profound and transformative teachings, the Sermon on the Mount. Our starting point is the phrase that opens the sermon. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This statement sets the tone for the entire discourse, inviting us to deeply reflect on humility and dependence on God. Let's begin our journey through the Sermon on the Mount by exploring the meaning of being poor in spirit. This expression doesn't refer to material poverty, but rather to an attitude of the heart. Being poor in spirit means recognizing our complete dependence on God, admitting that without Him, we are nothing and can do nothing. It's a call to genuine humility, an invitation to abandon our self-sufficiency and surrender completely to divine grace. This posture of humility is the foundation upon which the entire sermon is built. Jesus teaches us that the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who understand their own insufficiency before God. It's a wonderful paradox. The more we recognize our spiritual poverty, the richer we become in divine grace and blessings. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Here, Jesus isn't glorifying suffering, but promising divine consolation to those who face life's pains and sorrows with faith. It's a powerful reminder that God is with us in our darkest moments, offering comfort and hope. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meekness, often misunderstood as weakness, is actually controlled strength, a gentleness born of trust in God. The meek are those who, secure in divine love, don't need to impose themselves on others or fight for their own rights. They trust that God will take care of them and therefore can treat others with kindness and compassion. Continuing, Jesus declares, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. This is a call to righteousness, not just in our external actions, but in our hearts. It's a deep longing to see God's will manifested in our lives and in the world around us. Those who seek God's righteousness with the same intensity as a hungry person seeks food will find full satisfaction in His presence. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. In this verse, Jesus reminds us of the importance of compassion and forgiveness. We are called to extend to others the same mercy we receive from God. It's a principle of spiritual reciprocity. As we are merciful to others, we experience God's mercy more deeply in our own lives. The next beatitude challenges us. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Purity of heart goes beyond mere external morality. It's an inner integrity, a sincerity of purpose, and a singular devotion to God. Jesus promises that those who cultivate this purity will have a clearer perception of God, experiencing His presence in a more intimate and profound way. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. In a world marked by conflicts and divisions, Jesus calls us to be agents of peace. This doesn't mean avoiding conflicts at all costs, but actively working to promote reconciliation, both between people and between humanity and God. Peacemakers reflect God's character, who sent His Son to bring peace between Him and His creation. The last beatitude may seem contradictory at first glance. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus doesn't hide the fact that following his teachings may lead to opposition and even persecution. However, he assures that those who remain faithful in the face of adversity have a special place in God's kingdom. This promise encourages us to stand firm in our faith even when we face difficulties because of it. After establishing these fundamental principles, Jesus continues his sermon by addressing practical issues of daily life. He talks about relationships, teaching us to go beyond the letter of the law and embrace its spirit. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. This revolutionary teaching calls us to break the cycle of revenge and retaliation, choosing instead the path of love and forgiveness. Jesus also addresses the issue of prayer, teaching us what we now know as the Lord's Prayer. 
This model prayer teaches us to prioritize God's will, trust Him for our daily needs, and seek His forgiveness while committing to forgive others. It's a powerful reminder that our spiritual life should be centered on our relationship with God and reflect His character in our interactions with others. Chaos the Sermon on the Mount also challenges us regarding our priorities. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. This teaching invites us to a radical change of perspective, encouraging us to invest in eternal values instead of seeking only temporary material gains. Jesus also addresses anxiety, a problem as relevant in our days as it was in his time. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? This teaching reminds us of the importance of trusting God and keeping our priorities aligned with His purposes. One of the most challenging aspects of the Sermon on the Mount is the call to unconditional love. Jesus instructs us, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This commandment goes against our human nature, which tends to respond to hate with more hate. However, Jesus calls us to a higher standard, reflecting God's own love, who causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. The sermon also includes teachings on judgment and discernment. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. This often misinterpreted passage is not a call to lack discernment, but rather a warning against hypocritical and condemnatory judgment. Jesus encourages us to examine our own faults first before pointing out the faults of others, promoting an attitude of humility and self-reflection. As he concludes the sermon, Jesus presents us with the parable of the two builders, emphasizing the importance of not just hearing his teachings, but putting them into practice. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. As we reflect on the Sermon on the Mount, we are challenged to examine our lives in light of these teachings. Are we living the Beatitudes? Do our relationships reflect the love and forgiveness that Jesus taught? Are our priorities aligned with the values of God's kingdom? Living the Sermon on the Mount is not an easy task. Indeed, if we rely only on our own strength, it's impossible. However, the good news is that we are not alone on this journey. The same God who calls us to this high standard of living promises to empower us through His Holy Spirit. As we seek to incorporate these teachings into our daily lives, we discover that the Sermon on the Mount is not just a set of rules to be followed, but an invitation to a life transformed by God's power. It's a call to be salt of the earth and light of the world, positively influencing the society around us through lives that reflect Christ's character. May we, each day, seek to live out the principles of the Sermon on the Mount, trusting in God's grace to transform us and use our lives for His glory. We've reached the end of our reflection on the Sermon on the Mount. I hope this message has touched your heart and inspired you to seek a life more aligned with Jesus' teachings. If you were blessed by this content, please don't forget to help us spread this message. Follow our Blessed Messages for You channel to receive more uplifting content like this. Leave your like on this video and share in the comments how the Sermon on the Mount has impacted your life. Your participation is crucial for us to continue bringing God's Word to more people. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Until the next video.